All right, guys and gals, I think it's about that time of day again here after all. all right, hope you had a great day out there in the markets, but it's time to get back to work. It's Wednesday evening. It is January 29th, 2020. My name is Joseph, and as always, welcome back to your nightly newsletter. Now, if you're here for the first time, it's great to have you with me. I help traders find high-quality setups, the best of the best entry setups, using a very simple three-step strategy that we teach and trade together every morning in our trade room. But my job is a little bit different tonight. Tonight, my job is is to help you find the best levels of support and resistance for tomorrow, the best entry setups and exit targets for tomorrow. And most importantly, my job tonight is to help you help keep you out of trouble, avoiding the most common traps waiting around the corner on Thursday's trading session. And we're going to cover a lot in this video tonight. As you can see in the background here tonight, I got all the charts all loaded up. We got some crude, some S&P, some NASDAQ, and some gold. We got some ranges. We got some reversals. We got some expansion triangles got a lot of great setups I'm watching for tomorrow we're going to talk about those in detail tonight on the video and of course we'll grab the calendar as well right but going into the end of the month we get some big news on the schedule for tomorrow had some big news that came out today and we'll talk about how that will affect tomorrow's trading session so we got a full full video in store for you guys and gals tonight before I jump in though and put the whole entire plan together I just want to remind you make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel I I don't want you to miss all the good stuff here on our YouTube channel. So to make sure you subscribe, hit that bell icon so you always get notified every time I publish something new. And don't forget, if you have any questions about anything we talk about in tonight's video, drop those questions in the comment section below. And I'll be watching after we publish the video tonight to make sure I cover all the questions. And don't forget, don't forget, if you tune in every evening and you love the video newsletter, right? help me support this channel by hitting that thumbs up button for me. It goes a long way for me to help expose this video to other traders every time hit that thumbs up button. So thank you so much for tuning in. Let's not waste any more valuable time. Let's get to work here tonight. I'm going to jump in first tonight though with that economic news calendar. Take a look at what the schedule looks like for tomorrow. Tomorrow, of course, is a Thursday morning. Boy, I can't believe we are cruising right on through this month of January. We are going into the end of the month, after all. We've been talking about this uh, pretty much all week, right? So we know tomorrow, of course, is a Thursday trading session. But most importantly, as you know, going to the end of the month, right? What do we know as we go into the end of the month? More volatility, right? As we've been talking about all week, increased volatility. Markets become more emotional as we go into the end of the day, end of the week, end of the month, and you can see tomorrow and Friday, we've got that cocktail of end of week and end of month. Now, of course, that's going to be a big uh, volatility boost for tomorrow as well. But let's not forget, too, what happened this afternoon, right? This afternoon, we heard from the Fed. Now, like I mentioned yesterday, a lot of people, a lot of professional traders, that is, they don't even try to mess around with the Fed announcement on, on that Wednesday afternoon. They set their alarm a little bit early the following day, and they come back the following day, right? As I said last night, we want to really try to trade that reaction, if I can if I can spell that a little bit correctly, right? We want to trade that reaction tomorrow. So the news that happened today, you know, wasn't much wasn't much of news. Uh, the Fed pretty much came out and said, you know, we're leaving rates the same. Everything looks cool, right? They they kind of walked back any trade concerns, right? The last time we heard from the Fed, they were worried about this tariff war going on, but they seemed to think that was under control. So uh, the, the, the you know the Fed seemed to think everything's going pretty rosy here. A lot of people don't trade this afternoon because of the Fed. They're going to come in tomorrow and they're going to get to work. So I would definitely encourage you, right, skip that extra that extra glass of wine tonight, set the alarm clock 20, 30 minutes earlier tomorrow and get to your desk early tomorrow because tomorrow is anticipated to be a pretty big day. We also heard from some big names here in the markets today, right? We had some had some uh, some data come out. Uh, Apple really stands out, right? Apple had a big, big blowout. They beat top line number, bottom line number. So of course, right, it's not on the calendar here today, right? But this afternoon, Apple comes out and just crushes their earnings. So if I if I see Apple doing well, I have to think people tomorrow are probably going to be trading the Nasdaq. So that tells me I should probably try to work the Nasdaq into my trading tomorrow, if at all possible. So those are some some kind of tips, right? Some hints we're seeing out of the 
market today, right? Some of the stuff we saw this afternoon, the Fed, of course, telling us, right, let's get to work early tomorrow. It should be a good day tomorrow. Apple, right, those big blowout earnings this afternoon. Apple tells me definitely want to consider, right, looking at some NASDAQ stuff here tomorrow as investors get back to work, placing their bets for monthly targets, right, for the month of January. So we definitely have some news today that's given me a little bit of hints as far as what to look forward to here for tomorrow. Well, speaking of tomorrow, though, right, what do we have on the schedule here for tomorrow? You can see some big news tomorrow morning, right? Not the jobless claims. The jobless claims is really a sleeper, but I'm talking GDP, right? That that quarterly GDP tomorrow coming out Thursday, January the 30th. GDP 830, right? If, if like I said earlier, if, uh, if getting to your desk early tomorrow, if you weren't quite convinced of it yet, we definitely know tomorrow with that GDP number, that's something we're definitely watching closely here for tomorrow. And of course, we'll be in our trade room every morning at eight o'clock Eastern time. And we'll do it all together, right? By trading the reaction to that GDP. Um, what else is going on tomorrow? We're still watching that rollover on gold. I talked about this earlier this week. I thought the rollover would happen today, but it looks like tomorrow will likely be that uh, rollover day on gold. So if you're a gold trader like we are in our trade room, definitely make sure you're keeping an eye on that rollover for tomorrow. And then I'm sure you're sick and tired of hearing all about, about, about the coronavirus, right? But of course, we saw today, we heard some big names like Delta Airlines and, and American Airlines canceling a lot of flights in and out of the US, right? We saw a bunch of airliners canceling that. And so what do you think when we hear about airlines canceling their flights for a month and a half? What do you think is going to happen to oil? Yeah, oil is going to be a little bit heavy because of that, I would imagine. Difficult, right? Difficult not to think that oil would take a hit when there's all this slowdown. Some of the pictures you're seeing right out of Beijing, out of Shanghai right now. These are, you know, ghost, right, ghost towns, right? Very, very, uh, very sad, of course, for the folks who are being affected by this. But you know that people are going to see that and they're going to try, right, to work that into their analysis for tomorrow. So a lot of news coming out today, right? A lot of stuff happening. Thing that's going to affect us tomorrow. A lot of things coming tomorrow. And we're going to kind of see how this coronavirus uh, continues to affect these markets. Uh, it might just be a, a big buy the dip moment for the equity indexes as we go into the month of February, right? We will see. And of course, tomorrow morning, eight o'clock Eastern time, like we do every morning, we'll be right in our trade room, making sure we navigate all this stuff together. So make sure you come out and join me. Now, speaking of navigating everything together, why don't we look at the charts here for tonight? I got everything all prepped up here for us. Got some crude, some S&P, some NASDAQ, and some gold. Lots of ranges you can see on this charts right now. Got some expanding triangles, got some really strong moves, obviously, coming out of Fed. So we're going to cover a lot of different bases in this video tonight. Let's jump in first on the black gold. The Texas T, the crude oil futures. What do we know about oil right now? We know the day began in a range. We know that there was uh, there was a bit of a flare up in the Middle East, right? There was a, I guess, a missile attack on a on a pipeline somewhere. It didn't do anything, right? And then on top of that, shortly thereafter, literally shortly, you know, no no pun intended, but shortly thereafter, we heard from big airliners, right? American Airlines came out this morning and 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 announced they were cutting flights, and I think that's what really made this mark it take a nosedive, right? It brought the S&P down right along with it, which again, might end up being a very big buy the dip moment for tomorrow. We'll talk about that in just a moment. So we know we definitely began in a range up there, but that yeah, that didn't didn't end in a range, right? Well, actually it did end in a range, but we, not before it turned very bearish. Now a bear market always tells me to sell high, sell at resistance. So I'm looking for levels of resistance that I can use here right now. And of course, the first thing I noticed is I got this low here marked up, up at the highs here. That's a level of resistance I'm watching here for tomorrow. I can also see that expanding triangle, right? That rising resistance trend line. That's a great level for tomorrow. And then, hope, oh, wait a second, one more here. We also see this range in here. Now, ranges are really, really important clues because they tell me to buy low, sell high, and most importantly, avoid the middle. And I'm sure you probably have noticed on your own trading how important it is to avoid the middle of those ranges. They'll tell you good patterns, right? The in the middle of a range is where good patterns go to fail, right? Great patterns will fail on you in the middle of those ranges. I'm going to stay out of that middle of that trading range. What's also very important is if I take the size of that trading range and I copy and paste it up and I copy and paste it down, right? You'll notice that gives me some sell zones 
overhead, and it gives you some buy zones underneath. And you'll notice, right, there's a lot of stuff here stacking up on top of this 53, 53 half, 53, 60 area, channel high, trend line high, battle zone high, right? You could even go as far as to say the previous, right, the previous lows from earlier on in the session. So hopefully by now I've, I've made my case on we know we're bearish. There's no doubt about that. The bulls got a little bit of a rally here, but they couldn't get anything going on it. But uh, we know we're bearish. I want to be a seller. I want to sell high and I want to sell at a level of resistance. And so what I'm looking to do is I'd like to see uh, a nice short covering rally. I'm hoping that sellers will kind of run out of bullets down here. You can see there's a lot of, you know, obviously there's something holding this market above $53 a barrel. And by the way, if you're an oil trader, right, we, we, we have seen a lot of 53, right? 53 has been a very popular number uh, over the last really 18 to 24 months. We always seem to go back to 53. So we know there's something holding us up there, right? So I'm hoping that the sellers will eventually run out of bullets. I'm hoping that that will lead to a bit of a short covering rally. And I hope that once we get up around these resistance areas overhead, I'm hoping that we'll get some buyers that will come in and try to pick that reversal. Right? Most times a bear market tries to reverse, it's going to fail and it'll end up going right back down again. So I'm hoping that those buyers will try to buy that pullback off of that moving average. We already know there's a lot of resistance waiting up there. And if I can get those buyers to commit to it, well, now we know exactly where those stop losses are. You know, as I always say on the newsletter, right, where the pain points are. Isn't that really what it is, right? That's where the pain starts. If you're a buyer, Right. If you're a buyer and you make that run, right? If you're a buyer, you try to buy that pullback. Where's your stop going to go? It's going to go right below that low, and that's exactly where I want to try to sell into those stop losses. Now, uh, a lot of times after that failure triggers, and we trigger those stops, that'll usually get you a nice quick first target. Then keep your eyes open for the pullback because that pullback almost always comes. And again, this is a really common what I call combination setup. It's a in this case a buyer failure into a seller pullback. Now remember, there's a there's a no trade zone, right? So you don't want to be taking that pullback inside the range, right? That's kind of the only caveat on this, right? Sometimes those pullbacks go a little bit lower and you got to stay away from those inside the range. That is definitely something I'm watching for to sell tomorrow. Now, as we go lower, how can I be a seller as we go lower here? Well, you'll notice I've got some support concerns down here. Mainly, I've got my battle zone, right? And you know you're onto something right when when you got the buyers buying in that battle zone before the range was even created today. This is how I this is one of the easy tricks to kind of confirm that trading range. So we know buyers are already there. We already know sellers are taking their profit there. So I really don't want to be a seller as we go lower, right? The last thing I'd want to do is try to sell into that low. Now, I understand, I understand, you know, we heard about the airlines, you know, canceling flights. We've heard about the concerns about the, you know, Chinese economy with the lack of, right, tourism, and that's going to kill demand for oil. I, I, I realize all of that. But as of right now, though, that's just some news headlines. And if you're going to trade the news, you need to see the news or hear the news. And then you have to get confirmation from the price action. So if I was going to try just to sell as the market goes lower, that would be basically trying to predict what's happening next. And, you know, predicting, you know, we'll, 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 we'll let other people try predictions, right? Traders don't predict. Traders react to what we're seeing on the chart. So I, I, I definitely can, I wouldn't argue with you if you said, man, I'm just going to short this thing, right? That's just going to keep tumbling because, you know, the sky's falling and the airlines, I, I, okay, I get it, I get it. But a long-term strategy that just over, you know, that just kind of, you know, gut instincts, you know, reacts to news, it's probably not going to make you that much money in the long run, right? If if I could rely on my gut instincts every every time, well, let's put it this way, I wouldn't be doing this video for you right now because if, if our instincts were enough, you wouldn't need my help, right? That's for sure. I wouldn't have needed a coach, right, if instincts were all we needed. So my instinct definitely says, just short this thing, man, right? This coronavirus is getting out of control, right? That That is a dangerous way of thinking. So the bottom line is I can't just get lazy and say short with a breakout go 
going lower because, you know, again, we already see proof back here that sellers are seeing that as a target. So I've got to wait for some proof as we go lower. And there are really two things I'm looking for for proof as we go. The first one would be what I call a one two, three breakout. And that would be really what I what what the what the most conservative way to do this would be, right? I want to see a strong move down, but then I gotta see him hold that pullback. If they can't hold that pullback, right, what's gonna happen is it's gonna go right back up into that range again. And we'll talk about that plan here in a moment. Once I get that one, two, three breakout, now let's move that trend line down. Let's draw the trend line off of that major high now, and now let's sell off the top of that, what I call a hidden channel. Now, where's my target on that? My target's down to that 52.13. That's the low from when this whole thing started, right? Last week, if you recall, right? That's that low from last week. So just remember, you gotta wait for the confirmation, right? Wait for that one, two, three, and then you gotta be ready when it pulls back, right? To hit that, hit that sell off the top of that hidden channel. Now, another pattern, which is a little more aggressive, this one you'll really have to make sure you get a strong move down, is I wanna see a strong move right on through these lows. Nice strong move down. I'm gonna see a shallow pullback, a lower low in price. Okay, strong move down, shallow pullback, not a very deep pullback, shallow pullback, and a lower low in price. Then mark that high and look for that trap above that high. I call this a two try trap breakout, two try breakout pattern. And really what you want in this case is you want to see proof A of a strong move down, but then B that lower low. That lower low is a big difference than, of course, what I'm going to show you in a second, which would be the reversal pattern we'll look for here in a moment. I call it a two try breakout pattern and we look for that sell as we make a run down to, again, that 52.13. So now we've got a pretty good idea of how we're going to sell this market, if the market goes up or if it goes lower. And again, I'm going to stay out of this middle. Now, I'm missing one component, right? How do we get long on this market, right? How do we get long in this market? Wouldn't surprise me whatsoever. All, everyone's thinking short on crude. When everyone's thinking the same thing, you know what happens, right? The opposite quite often, doesn't it? Markets are very counterintuitive like that. So how do we buy this market? Well, if I get to run lower here, I'd like to get down in that support area I mentioned earlier, right? Can I just buy it at that point? No, we're way too bearish, right? So when I'm bearish, and I want to be a buyer, I have to give the sellers a, a, you know, kind of the respect that they deserve, right? What I'll do is I'll wait for the market now to pull back to the moving average. And as it's doing it, I'm looking for those bears to try to sell it twice. Now remember, up above up above the range, I was looking for buyers to fail, right? And I would sell into those or into those stops. Remember that from earlier on? So once we know that is the plan to go with the trend. I'm just going to be a little more conservative here and buy off what I call a nested failure to get that buy going higher. Now, I'm going to warn you on this, right? I'm not going to do this on a one minute time frame or a real, you know, fast 144 tick chart, right? You want to make sure as you go down, right? You know, imagine kind of turning around that battleship, right? You're turning around this momentum. You got to give those bears the benefit of the doubt. Let them try once, let them try twice. In my trade room, I call it clear separation, right? You shouldn't have to ask me if there are two tries, right? It will be, it'll be obvious, right? Like back here, right? There's one try, pull back, there's two try. You can easily see there's two tries right there, right? Makes sense, okay? So as we go lower, one try, pull back, one, two, and go back up from there. It's a little more conservative, but you have to be conservative because you're going against the trend. What happens a lot of times is if you get too aggressive with it, and you try to buy it right after a straight failure, they'll come right in and they'll eat your lunch, right? They'll pick your pocket right where you're getting in is where the big money will come in and smack it right as it goes lower. So you don't want to get caught, right? Trying to be a buyer too aggressively. So again, a nested failure as we try to come off of that low. Now, one more thing here, one more thing here. What if we get a rally back higher here? Now we got that gap. Okay, I'm going to leave that gap on there because those gaps, they have a knack for being magnets, all right? And you'll usually see a lot of times if we can stay within striking distance of those gaps, markets will just keep on going right back to those gaps even after 
the gap has been filled, right? So let's take a look at this. How do we get long as it goes higher? It's the same idea here. We're bearish, so I've got to get some momentum in my direction so I can actually rely on this. What's one pattern? One of them would be a one, two, three reversal. A same thing as going lower, but again, we've got to reverse that trend. I can't just buy that first pullback. It's not reliable enough, right? Because how could I tell the difference? How can I tell the difference between that one and this one, right? It's impossible to tell the difference. And I don't want to hear about some momentum divergence that gives you the signal to, you know, that will break down. That that correlation will lead, will, will lead you broke, trust me, right? There's not a lot you can do to use momentum, especially momentum indicators, right, to predict when you get a reversal. Because when a market reverses, every momentum indicator is going to be either overbought or oversold. It's not going to give you a very good reading. You have to wait for that real one, two, three. Or... You're just gambling, and you know when you gamble, eventually you're gonna pay the bookie, right? Eventually the bill comes due. So once I get that one, two, three, I'm gonna mark up that low. I'm gonna draw a trend off the high, and then bring it down to that low. I'm gonna bring that trend line up. That creates that hidden channel, right? And as I always tell you guys on this video, uh, the reversals sometimes do take a while, but that pullback oftentimes happens fast. Right, So be aware, the reversal might take a half an hour, but the market might pull back in two and a half minutes, and you've got to be ready. Right, And you've got to get aggressive on that pullback. Target is back up to retest those highs. Now, one of my favorites on a short covering rally... Right, one of my favorites on a short covering rally. That's what it would be, right? Short covering rally. If it goes higher, one of my favorites is that two try breakout pattern. Right, we go up. Bears try once, bears try twice, and I'm buying into those stop losses. Ideally, as you can see, I'd love to get above this trend line, right? I mean, that would be ideal, right? Up, profit taking, higher high, pull back, see how I draw this, right? One try, two try, we're buying that second one, right? A lot of times what happens is the market goes up and it comes right back down again, right? Surprise, surprise, right? How it does that, right? It goes up, straight back down again. Right? So instead of being a buyer or a seller into that, into that V top or V bottom, instead of trying to buy it now, wait for one more and buy into those stop losses. Again, it's a little more conservative, but we're not, there's, no, there's no first place ribbon for the number of trades you take. We're trying to make the most reliable trades possible. And guys, speaking of reliable trades, I also want to turn you on to our free trading course because I teach the most reliable of all of my setups. I'll put a link in the upper right-hand corner here for you. Grab that link, get registered. If you want to learn all about my most reliable trade setups and my favorite trading strategy, I get a great free trading course for you. That course will be a great... Uh, uh, kind of kickstart for you so you're ready for trading with me in the trade room every morning or if you're not with me in the trade room it'll be a great primer for you so you can get the most out of our time every evening on this newsletter so make sure make sure you grab that that uh, that link in the upper right hand corner and remember guys everything all the links I talk about tonight in the video will be right in the description of this YouTube video so grab those links right either upper right hand corner don't worry, pause the video, make sure you get registered for that free trading course. Let's keep going here. So we got the oil looking pretty good here. Oil should be a pretty good day tomorrow, whether it goes up or down. Again, with this coronavirus really affecting us here right now. Let's grab the S&P now. Now the S&P, I'm gonna warn you, the S&P could get a little bit bloody for tomorrow. And we're gonna talk about why here as we go into it. What do we know about the S&P right now? We know that we have a big, strong bear move down. It's very difficult to call this a bull market, isn't it? It's a very strong, strong move down. What does a strong move tell me? Anytime we see a strong move, I have to respect that momentum and anticipate another leg. Now, I know, I know, I know, sometimes you will get these V bottoms, right? But that is all based on news, right? These are news events coming out. They're shaking these markets up right now. Uh, let's put it this way. It's very difficult. It's very difficult to tell the difference between a market that V bottoms and a market that strong move and traps out, right? There's a very, it's very difficult to anticipate which one's going to V bottom and which one's going to retest, right? Because if you buy too aggressively, think it's going to bounce off that low, a lot of times it'll come right back and stop you out before it runs back into that range. I'm sure you probably have learned that lesson just like I did many years ago. So please, please do not let that example right there, that is, you know, it's a, it's, I wouldn't say it's rare, 
but it's not the most common scenario, right? And what we again, we're looking for reliability. We're not looking to overtrade, looking for the trades that make us money, the trades we can bank on, right? Pay our mortgage with, put our kids through school with. We can sleep at night knowing that tomorrow when I see this trade, I'm going to take it with confidence, right? Trying to pick trying to pick bottoms on these V bottoms, right? That'll that'll make you that'll make whatever hair left you got fall out, right? It's very stressful environment. So, again, anytime I see a strong move down like this, I have to respect that momentum and anticipate another leg in the same direction. It's a very, very important clue that we'll go into in more detail. What else do we know right now? I think it's pretty obvious. You can see those, right? We talk about a lot here right now. You can see this expanding triangle. Now, expanding triangles are really just ranges. You'll notice there's a big old range right in the middle here, right? And that range has expanded, as you can see. And of course, right, we talked about this last night on the newsletter, right? You buy zones below, sell zones above. What I really want to kind of put you on to right now is that expanding triangle. Now, it's pretty easy to see this expanding triangle has a bullish bias to it. So this is definitely where, as a, as a trader, I would say, okay, the overall trend is bullish right now for sure, right? There's definitely an overall bullish tone to the market right now. But again, I have to respect that short-term bearish environment. This is the one thing about day trading, right? If you're a day trader, you've got to really embrace the short-term momentum. Right, you know, I got myself into a lot of trouble when I was a rookie trying just to follow the long-term momentum. Right, the problem is the long-term momentum is great if you're a long-term trader, but if you're a short-term trader, though, you'll get you'll get bled to death. Right, getting stopped out, stopped out, stopped out with small stops, trying to go with that trend right now. Okay, so the bottom line is we know we're bullish overall, but we got that big bear move down. Right, that's the big elephant in the room right now. That's the big that's the big variable, and that's what I think is going to be the biggest challenge here for tomorrow. Because again, we know there's a we know there's a ton of opportunity here to buy that dip and go all the way back up to that gap that got filled, all the way back up to retest the high of that expanding triangle. We know that opportunity is there, right? But we gotta be careful we don't get in trouble trying to get in too aggressively to do that. And that's why I said I think the S&P just might be the most difficult out of all the charts that we see tonight. The NASDAQ is nothing compared to this S&P. So let's talk about this now, right? How do we buy it? How do we sell it? And what do we want to worry about here for tomorrow? Again, it all started with, right, from yesterday. Believe it or not, this is the same range from last night's newsletter. We had our sell zones overhead. We had our buy zones right underneath. We had our trend lines right, looking to buy off that low. So we, we a lot of this stuff is very similar, if not the exact same, from last night's newsletter. I've got my measured move now coming down, right, big leg down, one, two, three, that's a support level down. Let's just clean that up. I've also got the amount of the move above the range is the amount of the move below the range. It's important to, to remind you that ranges are balanced the amount of the move above the range oftentimes swings down to the amount below the range. And look at this area down here, 32, 62. Look left, and what do you see right there? Yeah, what is that right there? That is, come on, come back to me here. Give me that. Hold on. We'll get you back. There we go. Get me back there. There we go. Sometimes I move too fast and the drawing tool gets messed up. Look at this area back here, 32, 62 and a quarter, right? Those are two prior highs. I call these reversal lines. Anytime I see double tops like that, I always sort of come back and grab those as support. That is a naked or a virgin, right, re a reversal line. And it all lines up. You can see here, it all lines up right on top right, of that pendulum swing and that measured move. So the moral of the story is don't be surprised if we keep going a bit lower. Now, let's take a look at what the overall plan is going to be. First of all, I want to be a buyer down here, no doubt about it. I really don't want to sell this market right now. I want to be a buyer, but how do I do it safely? How do I respect the momentum of the bears, but still stay focused on being a buyer? I've got to give them a couple shots here, right? Try once, try twice, and back up, we go from there. That is really what I'm waiting for right now, and it may take some time. This is why I said earlier, it might get a bit bloody here as we try to rally back up into that range, right? So as we go lower here, 
all that momentum. You know, and again, don't get me wrong, right? We might see it be bottom. You know, the market is just erratic like that right now because of the coronavirus, because of the FOMC announcement this afternoon. A lot of stuff going on right now. So I'll give you a plan if it does be bottom off this low. But the conservative entry on this is going to really be letting those bears try once, letting those bears try twice. And I'll tell you, if we really get lucky, we'll get a trap low below that low, right? Because that trap will mean I can now structure my trade where my stop can be underneath that low, right? I now can get an easy small risk, large reward opportunity, right? What you don't want to do is, is let that nested failure go up, up, and then try to buy in here. Okay, this is a very common mistake, right, that I made a lot when I was a rookie, and I'm sure you might make the same mistake as well, right? We get this, we get the bears try once, try twice, but now by the time we're buying, we're buying way up here. And remember, at that point now, your stop still really has to be down here. Now, that's your risk. That's your, no, that's not going to be a very good trade to take. What happens a lot of times is on those types of, right, again, on kind of this fluttering higher here, a lot of times what happens is it'll go up, it'll slam lower, it'll trap below that one, and then you'll get it, right? So what happens is you want to really try to buy as low as you can on this, right? So as we go down, one try for the bears, two try for the bears, I really want that second try to really extend as far as it can go, ideally get that trap low, nice strong signal, and rip it right back higher here. Now, another thing you want to keep in mind is going to be if we get if we get for example the did I do it again? Yep, did it again, didn't I? There we go. Come on, come back to me here. Um, I should I should learn by now to use this thing. Anyways, right? We may also see is a strong move down. Right? We may see that second leg. And if we get that second leg, same thing really applies, but now I can be a lot more aggressive with it. As long as I can get that, right, that follow-up leg, because anytime we see a strong move, we should get that follow-up leg. If I can get that follow-up leg, now I can get aggressive with it. Now I can be one, two, and hit it, right? I'm not too worried about buying low at that point. I mean, I'm always worried about buying low, but I can be a lot more aggressive on that entry now after I get that lower low in price, right? So two scenarios here, and I know I've been long-winded on this, but I want to make sure you know how to do this correctly here for tomorrow. One, two, really, really low, right? Nice and low on that second try. Or if they get that second leg and they make that lower low, right? Moving average comes over. Bears come back in. One, two. And I could be a lot more aggressive on that one because they've already got their itch scratched, right? I was talking about this in the trade room yesterday. You know, everyone assumes that trading has to be a zero-sum game. But in this situation, you're literally saying to the Bears, do what you want to do, get it out of your system, make your money, right, scratch that itch, and then give me a chance to get my money, right? That's what you're doing. You're basically saying, okay, the Bears, the Bears mean business. Let them get what they came for. Once they got what they want, they want to retest that low, now I can get my money. Right? We can, you know, everybody can make money in these markets. It's not like a, I can only win when you're losing. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's not that, it's not that ruthless, right? A lot of folks can make money way down. Once they're done, I can make mine on the way back up. So now I've kind of beat that horse, right? I think actually don't, I, I, I'm going to use that, that, that metaphor here, but I think we've exhausted, right? That, uh, right that uh, uh that plan here right now what if i'm wrong you know or what if i'm not wrong what if it does v bottom on this right what if it does pop right back higher here if it pops higher look for that trap right if it pops higher look for that trap all right look for those bears taking profit bears coming in right or buyers taking profit look for that trap or if we v bottom back into that range right now and sit inside that range it's simply a trading range obviously i want to buy underneath that low wait for it to poke its head out wait for those bears try to sell that pullback and buying right into those stop losses, right? As you can see though, I'm not about to pick a bottom here and I'm not about to chase it as it goes back inside that range, right? If it does give me the two try entry, I'll gladly grab it off the low. But if it sneaks back into that range, I've got to make sure, right, I get in underneath that range. Now, another possibility is, is this thing does V bottom, right? It does V bottom. And look what happened as it went through the range. One try, two try, buying it back up. That's the exact same pattern, right? We keep talking about same thing, right? Strong move up, 
profit taking for the bulls higher high comes in right bears come in and hit it and i can buy into those stops as we go right so keep an eye and again this of course is all based on if it just rips right back higher here i don't want to mess around in the range i realize it's difficult not to chase after it in the range but you probably have learned that ranges are very dangerous wait for the bears sorry wait for the bulls to take some profit wait for the bears right to get that higher high right and sell it again and then we can whack it, right? Look for that strong signal candle with my target. My target is certainly back to retest the high, but you definitely, if you're if you're in on that two try, that two try breakout, right? You definitely want to sort of leave that runner up to that expanding triangle that we've talked about here so far this week, right? This triangle, this triangle will certainly be a very, very good spot here for us, right? Definitely something to keep your eyes on for tomorrow. All right, so how do we sell this thing now? Now that we know we want to buy it, right, how do we sell it? Uh, trying to be a seller on this can be a bit tricky because I'm going to have to get through this area, right? I've got to see this thing tumble, all right? I can't just mess around down here and try to sell it, right? It's not going to work. We're sitting at too much support. And again, right, we've got this big move up. People are going to be trying to buy that dip. So how do we, right, how do we, how do we short this thing? First of all, I, I, I have a hard time trying to sell it here. Right. What you could do is, if you want to short this thing in a pullback, right, the only real pattern you could use on this would be basically a failed crown reversal. You have to wait for the bears to try once, wait for those bears to try twice, right? look for those buyers to buy off that low, and then literally sell into their failure. That's the only way you're really going to be able to time this properly here, right? So what's going to happen is you'll have to get the bears trying once, bears trying twice, get the buyers to commit on that two try, and then as soon as they fail, right, you're selling into those stops. You're, you're gonna, you're, that's the only way you're going to do it, right? You're going to have to anticipate those buyers fighting for this, and you'll have to wait for those buyers to fail. This will be a very, very challenging place to short this market tomorrow. If you're a relatively new trader, I would probably wait for a more reliable setup, like a one, two, three breakdown. Mark that low, right? Find that find that hidden channel high and sell off of that high or what would make my job a whole lot easier is i love to see us strong move down bulls try you know pull back off the profit taking lower low trap high and go right that would be a whole lot easier to swallow because at that point you'd already have the proof you know, you wouldn't be fighting the buyers trying to come off this low right now. Where's my target coming off the low? My target going down? It's back to those lows, right? My target is obviously back down to retest those lows. There's a big range down here, so I would definitely look at that range, you know, 32, 45. If we can get through that low here, that range is an easy, easy magnet, and that, of course, will be our target for the bears tomorrow. The buyers want to get back up to retest the high. The sellers want to get down to retest that low, but be very very careful trying to sell into this area here. I know it looks very bearish right now. I'm hoping these bears will try a couple times and get a chance to buy off of that low. If they do continue it going lower, I won't chase. I'll mark up those hidden channels and hit that sucker right off the top of that hidden channel. But as always, you got to wait for the proof, right? We only want the best of the best entry patterns. We only want the best setups that give us that high winning probability. And again, if you want to learn my favorite patterns, make sure you grab that free course I mentioned in the upper right hand corner. All the links I'm talking about tonight will also be in description of that YouTube video. Let's keep going. What about some NASDAQ here tonight? NASDAQ is a walk in the park compared to the S&P. I apologize about the S&P. The S&P is a very advanced uh, tactics right now on the S&P because you've got a lot of momentum concerns. Um, they're not usually that difficult. Over on the NASDAQ, right, we have a couple different things here. There's nowhere near as much width or bearishness. The NASDAQ right now, you'll notice right now, I think it's pretty easy to see, we are bullish overall on the NASDAQ. And anytime we have a bull market, I want to buy the dips, want to buy the dips, want to find levels of support, right? So definitely watching this trend line. That would be a great level of support. I can also see this level around that 90-40, I said earlier, right, anytime we see some double tops like this, that area becomes a great level to be buying the dip, right, on this as well. So we definitely know that area around 90, you know, 90, 40 area. So really this whole little slice right here, this whole area down here is really a nice spot for buyers, right, to sink their teeth into. Now, before we just buy that low, though, it's important to remember that we also have a very strong 
shot down here as well. Now, this is, again, this is nothing in comparison to what we have on the S&P. And this is a really good example. You know, we talked about earlier how we had that blowout number today, both top and bottom lines on Apple. Apple, of course, is, you know, kind of the darling of the NASDAQ. You know, you get the FANG stocks, right, uh, that are, that are you know, that they, they make up, you know, 75% of the NASDAQ. So I would imagine, right, the NASDAQ would probably be sinking like a rock like the S&P did if it wasn't for right those big headlines out of Apple. So that definitely and definitely for me gives me a lot of more bullish confidence as we go into tomorrow. Now, remember, you know, what's the best way to trade the news? The best way to trade the news is is see the news Right? When you see what the news is, you'll have some opinion, but then make sure that price action confirms the opinion. Right? We don't just we don't just buy things because the news comes out because you'll get shaken out of good positions. You can be right on direction, but not right on your timing. You know, direction is pretty easy, right? You know, the news is bullish, get in. But as you probably have already learned, a lot of times bullish news initially pulls back before it actually goes back up to the highs like it, like, like we, like it really should, right? So we can't just trade the news. We have to see the news come out and then qualify or confirm what you think that news is saying by then uh, uh, using some sort of price action signal, right? That's the best way to trade the news because if you don't, you'll be right on direction, wrong on timing, and even if you're right on direction, you're still wrong on timing, right? You're still going to lose money. Okay, so we know we're overall bullish, right? We know we have a range, okay? That range, I talked about this last night. We really didn't know when, where the range was. Uh, we just knew we didn't want to buy high into that gap. This, of course, is the trading range. That trading range tells me there's my sell zones overhead. And look at how they keep hitting that sell zone overhead. Isn't that incredible, right? And, and I, you, you can't make this stuff up, right? I mean, this is the range right here. Right, so once you know the range is there, you mark up, right? You copy and paste up, you copy and paste down, and you can see, you can see how those bears they keep hitting those range expansion levels overhead to the tick. You can also see how how kind of bullish the market is because they're not getting those tests on the lows. So again, we definitely are seeing the news came out tonight or this afternoon in Apple, right? And we're definitely seeing the charts confirm what we assumed that news meant. This is definitely good stuff for buyers here tomorrow. I want to buy low, I want to sell high, and I want to avoid the middle. How do I buy low on this NASDAQ? Now, good news is it won't be nearly as bloody as the S&P. The S&P had that big move down. On the NASDAQ, if we can get down into really any, you know, honestly, this really could be a little bit higher here, just like that. It, it really could. Anything below that prior low will be seen as a bargain, right? It will be. It'll be like an iPad, right? Half half off, right? A Best Buy. It'll be a bargain. It'll be people waiting, you know, waiting in line to get orders filled right below that low here. I'll bet a lot of buyers have their orders just sitting down there, right, on single stocks, options, right, and of course, the NASDAQ futures. So as we get that run lower here, What's the problem? The problem is it's a very strong move down, right? We're rotating off the high, very strong move down. Now, again, I don't expect this market to put up as much of a fight as the S&P, but I do want to see one, two, and then back up right into that range we go. Now, I'm not as, again, I'm not expecting it to be as bumpy of a ride going back up to retest the high as the S&P, but I am going to have to follow my plan here because this is getting relatively wide because of this, if I can draw this thing, because this, this triangle is getting pretty wide here, right? I do want to try to get that moving average comes down, Bears try once, bears try twice, and then send it right back up into that trading range. Now, again, we already talked about, right, buying low, selling high here, right? How would I, how would I, if it just V bottoms here? If it V bottoms, I can't really do much inside the range. I'll wait for it to poke its head out. I'll wait for those sellers, those foolish sellers, to try to sell that pullback, and we'll buy up from there. Now, if it V bottoms and rips higher here, Okay, you really got two options on this. One is that one, two, three breakout. Mark the high, mark the low. Again, these oftentimes take longer than we want them to, but that pullback afterwards is usually pretty fast. One, two, three breakout into hidden channel pullback, right? Notice again, we're not buying the first pullback. Okay, you can't trust that one, unfortunately. So second one would be we jump up, we see profit taking, 
we see a higher high. Now, because we are right at these highs up here, I would certainly want to see a trap to really get the most reliable entry up there. Right? Does it make sense? You know, if I'm worried about buying into a level of resistance up there, traps are my favorite setups for that. We do a lot of work with traps in our trade room. And again, you can find access to that free trading course to learn all about trap patterns and how we use traps and what to avoid with traps right on that free trading course. So make sure you grab that as well. Those are two patterns there to buy as we go higher. And you can see right now as we're opening up right now in Asia, right, we can see it trying to run higher here right now. If it does keep going higher, one, two, three, right, break out, mark the high, mark the low, buy that pullback, or if it keeps on ripping higher, one, two, trap, and go. Be patient for that trap. Now, where are these buyers trying to go? They're trying to retest the high at first, right? It looks like that should be relatively easy right now. Where's the next big objective? The next big objective is really all the way up around that 9,300, right? That's where those all-time highs are. So if we do get a breakthrough, if we do get a nice strong break and we keep going, I've got this whole area up here, you know, 9250, 9260, just before that 9300. That will definitely be our big objective here for tomorrow. Now, I don't want to forget the bull, the bears, right? We've covered a lot here today so far, but I do want to make sure we are ready for if this thing knee jerks in the opposite direction. We know as the market goes down, we know at this point now. Now, this is actually pretty interesting here too. If it goes into the range, it starts, you know, struggling here now. If we sit inside this range, this really does kind of change what happens here now because now I can use a straight failure and I can buy into that failure here, right? A straight failure pattern into pullback combination. I can still use that pattern now, that simple, right? That simple seller failure into pullback combination if we get stuck inside that range. But again, if we go up and we collapse back down, that's a lot of momentum for those bears. And again, sometimes they will be, they will be bottom like that, but not every time. And you want to make sure you stay patient on that. So again, if we go sideways here, one try for the bears, two try for the bears. Now we know where stops are and we're buying right into those stop losses. Nice strong signal, right? Buying into those stops as we go. What's a, what's a sell look like? I can sell the high. We go up, one try for the bulls, two try for the bulls, right? Crown reversal. I can sell the high with a crown reversal. It probably would be the most aggressive trade you could take, right? Because of course, we get a lot of fundamentals, Apple's earnings, and charts confirming bullishness right now. So you might want to wear a helmet. Actually, you might want to wear a helmet, a mouth guard, and trade somebody else's account for that short on this. I'm joking, obviously, with you. But be careful, right? Be careful on that. That might not be the most reliable thing, right? It probably isn't the most reliable thing in the world because it is so bullish here right now. But that would be the pattern I'm looking for here to shell off. Off that high as we go lower right that one two three break down mark that low mark that high find that hidden channel and of course we'll look to hit that sell button right off the high of that channel where's my target as we go down on this the bear target 89 and a quarter all the way down there's a big range down there you may recall here right that range from earlier on in the week, right? Just below that 9,000 big round number. If we can take a, 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 a nosedive here down to that 9,000, that range is certainly going to be a price magnet. Don't forget, right? The one, two, three reversal is a great option or the strong move down, profit taking, lower low, right? Two try, two try breakout pattern, right? Stops are sitting right there and we'll sell into those stops. And again, the prerequisite for this is that strong move lower, right? That strong move lower to get short. As you can see right now though, as I'm filming this just after, after six o'clock Eastern time, right? It looks like Apple is looking for the breakout running higher, right? So again, strong move up one, two and go or one, two, three breakout by that pullback. Looking good there for the bulls on the Apple. How's my gold looking here right now? Wrapping up tonight on the gold. I do appreciate you guys sticking around here with me. By the way, if you're still watching this video right now, right, congratulations. If you're still watching this 45 minutes right into this video, you are the people I like to work with. You are the reason why I do these videos every evening. I would have killed to have had this type of help when I was a rookie trader many, many years ago. So if you're still watching right now, do me a favor. Hit that thumbs up button for me 
in the comment section below. Let me know you're still here, right? Type in, right? Type in still here in the comment section below this video. I want to see how many people are really still watching this video right now, who the, who the serious, right, traders are on this video right now. Hit the thumbs up, subscribe, right? If you have any questions, don't forget to type those questions in. But let me know if you're still here, right? You're one of those 1% finishers out there. All right, what's happening on gold? We're still watching rollover on gold right now. It does look like as we're going to the open, right now it does look like the 420 contract is probably what we'll be trading for tomorrow this is the 220 contract but as you can see it will be very similar okay so be aware we're probably looking at the 420 contract for tomorrow i've been talking about rollover pretty much all week here on the yellow metal what do we know about gold at this point we know that gold was very bearish until of course just recently right and we saw that one two three reversal at this point now you know what i'm gonna do once i see that one two three reversal i'm gonna mark up those highs i'm gonna bring it down to that low right and try to buy the low of that hidden channel right i'm gonna practice what i preach so to speak right so we know right now we do have a bull market that bull market gives us a one two three reversal if you look even closer at it you can see a very strong move up right here right that strong move up what does a strong move up tell us we're gonna probably get another leg Right? So anytime I see a bull market and a strong bull move higher, I know I've got to, I've got to be okay getting a bit aggressive here on that next pullback. Or if it doesn't pull back all the way for me, what would be another pattern I could use on this? Strong move up, one try for the bears, two try for the bears, trap and go. Absolutely. Glad to see you're paying attention out there. Right? So one try for the bears, two try for the bears, trap and go. That's a great pattern to watch for here on the gold. So we definitely can use all the stuff we've talked about so far on this video. We can use the same patterns, the same techniques, apply it a little bit differently on the yellow metal. So now that we know we, we're bullish, we know we have that one, two, three reversal. We know we have a channel. I want to be a buyer at support, right? So a couple things I'm seeing here right now. One, there's a beautiful level. I'm not sure, I'm not sure what is going on here at this level right here, but 1570.9, right? You got the bounce, 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 right? I love to buy that 70.9. Hold on. Watch that trend line. This is the same trend line we had as resistance last night. And now that trend line, guess what? It can be used as support now as well in almost the same area. So it's definitely no surprise here. I'd like to be a buyer at the low around that 72 area. Really, that would be ideal. Now, the hard part is going to be, can I actually get this thing to pull back? Because as it's rallying higher, this is just the bears getting out, right? That's, that's what this is. These are sellers getting out of their positions, and that's what's leading to, right, this big short covering rally. So a couple options I'm watching for right now on the gold. The best one would be, can I get back below the low of that channel? Can I get back underneath that moving average? Can I get those sellers to foolishly try to commit off the moving average? And I can look for a failure into pullback combination one of my favorite favorite combination patterns right get underneath the moving average get those bears to overcommit buy into their stops and then look for that pullback to finish the job where's the target back up to that 1580 1582 range that we had right back up at those recent highs now if we don't get that deep pullback right we pull back shallow we go higher mark up that low and we'll look at that trap below that low, right? Two try trap pattern. Or maybe we do go higher here, right? We do go higher. We run all the way back into that range. What do we do inside the range? We buy below the range. We wait for those buyers to run out of bullets. We wait for the pull back. We don't sell it. It's way too bullish to sell. We wait for some other poor sucker to sell. And we, of course, right, eat their lunch for them, right? We buy into those stop losses, right? So looking for here is is to get back into that range, right? There's the range from earlier on in the week, right? There's that range from earlier on in the week. My software keeps messing up with me, guys. Sorry about this. So, right, so there's my range here. Okay, you can also look at this, maybe like a triangle like that, right? There's your magnet right there, right? You don't need fancy software for this. You just got to know how to draw a range, know what a range looks like, know what a range really is. What is a range? A range is a magnet. A range is volume, right? There's a lot of volume 
that gets traded at this price level, right? And when there's volume, it becomes very sticky. It becomes like a magnet, right? When it comes back up, it'll go right into that range. Now, it might keep going, you know, back up to retest those highs. But, you know, as always, right, we need proof before we can try trading that. So for right now, though, right, my, my short-term objective is get back into that range, whether it be a pullback with a failure in go or whether it be a two try trap and go or whether it be a strong rally up into the range look for that seller failure and go right either one of those i don't care which one i get but i'm just not going to dilute my account by uh, over trading right that's the key we only want the most reliable setups the most important thing you can do as a new trader and I, and I learned this lesson the hard way. The most important thing you can do early in your career is get those winning percentages up. Because when you've got a high level of, when you've got a high number of wins, you, you, you build your confidence, right? When you get, when you're confident, you sleep well at night, your spouse won't have to listen to you complain all the time. You know, this is, this is real, right? This is real. If you're trying to do this on your own, right? And you're losing money every day, everybody suffers. And that's not easy. It's not easy to do this business when you're having a, a 45, 50% winning ratio. Get those winning ratios up to 75, 80%. Go small. One contract on it get your confidence levels up and then we can build off of that right the most successful businesses the most successful traders the most successful athletes the most successful at anything they do a couple things really well at the beginning and they build on those so get those winning percentages higher i'm hopefully helping you to kind of get an idea of what a reliable trade looks like that way you can get your winning percentages where they're going to be and again right we do it together every morning in our trade room and my number one goal is to get my clients with those winning percentages up above 80%. That way, no matter what your size is, no matter how big or small your account is, your confidence levels keep building, your account keeps building, right? Your, your, your family isn't stressed out about the whole thing, right? That's the real part of trading, right? We are human beings here. Anyways, how do we, how do we sell this thing? Can I even sell this market right now? I'd have to really be careful because the bears have to take it back and where's their objective? Their objective is right back to retest that low. So how could I sell this? Um, I could sell it if I got a crown reversal, right? But that would be a pretty aggressive short, right? It would be because it wouldn't be it wouldn't be a bear market yet, right? But if I get the buyers try once, buyers try twice, right? You could grab a crown reversal there. Okay, crown reversals are really great at major turning points, though. Okay, this is not a real turning point. You know what I mean? It's just not. Um, a, a crown reversal would be great off the low, right? Crown reversal back up, you know, off the high, right? Crown reversal back down. You know, reversals are great at turning points. So I don't think I would recommend a turn, you know, a reversal right now. Um, I think the best thing to do right now would be get a one, two, three break. See, but then you're selling right into that low. That's not going to be good. So what you want to do is you want to get this thing down in and use that to try trap. That'll be really the only way to really short this thing until, of course, we can get the one, two, three and run through it. Then once I see us getting through that low now, now I can grab that low, grab that high, and I can feel a whole lot more confident now selling off the top of that hidden channel. Hopefully that makes sense. I know we covered a lot in this video tonight, right? But again, tomorrow morning, your job is not to trade more. Your job is to trade less and take up only the best of the best trades. And don't forget, don't forget, you don't have to do this alone every evening, right? Or every morning or whenever, you, whenever you're trading out there, right? Come out and join us every morning, 8 o'clock Eastern time, where my number one priority is to get those winning percentages high, right? Get that get that spouse off your back. I, I I, I, ha I had that personal experience myself, right? Trying to trying to keep your family on board while you're learning this business. It's not easy, and I would hope I could be a great help to you, right, in getting your career started. Don't forget, we get together every morning, 8 o'clock Eastern Time. All the links are in the description of the YouTube video. Make sure you grab the advanced course and get registered for tomorrow morning's trade room. Don't be afraid to call me using that toll-free phone number in the upper left-hand corner. Don't be afraid to use that live support tool that buzz me on my desktop computer or if membership is not quite right for you or maybe you're here for the first time today and you're like who is this guy what is he all about grab that free course learn more about our three-step strategy our favorite entry setups see examples of how we apply this by grabbing that free trial right along with our free trading course and a free pass to our trade room but that's it for now guys right 
Great work finishing up this video tonight. I'm proud of you. Keep focused on those winning percentages. Less is more. Less is more. And boy, as always, we'll see you guys tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock Eastern time. If not, come back and see us again tomorrow night. We'll wrap up the month with the last newsletter of January. I can't believe it. No matter what, though, guys, be well out there, be nice to each other, and be here next time. Adios, amigos. Bye-bye for now.